Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt, and what I want to talk about is the subtleties of science. Your doctoral based recommendations on research and data and analytics to best serve you and your health needs. And so what I want to talk about is kind of the subtleties of that. So data is data, but where the big difference happens is how that data gets interpreted. So for example, the flu shot. Every year, fall time comes around and you're recommended to get a flu shot because they see data that says, hey, there's a 50% reduction in deaths due to flu shot. What I want to talk about is how they actually came up with those numbers. And one of the best studies came out in 2009 where this group of researchers, they saw the current data. One group said, hey, there's a 50% reduction in flu deaths. The other one says there's a 48% reduction in flu deaths. And this new group's like, those guys are whack jobs. It can't be that high. So what they did is they took the data from nine flu seasons in Northern California, because they know who got the flu shot, who died, all that fun data. And then what they did is they said, non-flu season versus flu season, there's a 7.8% increase in deaths during the flu season. And that's from anything. That's not just the flu, that could be from dog bites, that could be from terrorist attacks, that could be from lightning strikes or bathtub drownings, whatever it is, all cause mortality. And then they kind of made this estimation that it had nobody gotten the flu shot, that only 9.8% would be increase in deaths. So to me, that's only a 2% increase in effectiveness of the flu shot. But then they take this other data point, which they call the vaccine effectiveness, and they label that at 4.6%. And what that means is basically, here's the people that got the flu shot, they only had a 4% increase in death during flu season versus non-flu season. So for you and I look at the data, we could say worst case scenario, 9.8% of people died during flu season. If the vaccine was effective at 4.6%, then we would have a 5.2% effectiveness rate. Or you could look at a 9.8 minus a 7.8 and say it's only 2%. What gets reported to you is they take that 4.6% vaccine effectiveness divide it by 9.8, kind of the worst case scenario, and create a percentage which then comes to a 47% reduction in death. So, it's how you interpret the data. It could be either a 2% or 47%. So you have to look at the actual hard numbers. The other major example is what happens with Lipitor. They say there's either, you've seen different headlines, there could be a 50% reduction in deaths or there could be a 33% reduction in deaths. And how they come up with those numbers is that for the group in the Lipitor, Let's say for every 100 people, they had two heart attacks. And then they have the group with the placebo. For every 100 people there, there was three heart attacks. You and I would say three minus two is one. One out of 100 is only 1% effectiveness rate. What they say is three minus two is one. And one is half of two, so therefore a 50% reduction. Or one into three is a 33% reduction. So when you're looking at science and when your doctor's basing his decision on that, you might want to dive deeper into the data of things opposed to taking for what's face value. So that's the subtleties of science and hopefully you're a little smarter for it.